Welcome to part three, where we're going to be asking the question, what about preventing disasters such as ransomware? Now, we've discussed workload considerations, the 321 backup principle, and how peer GFS can help you attain RPO and RTO goals. And by now you may be thinking that if peer GFS is reacting to file level changes and copying files to other participant locations, wouldn't it also copy a ransomware infected file too? Now, other DFS solutions may, but peer GFS includes malicious event detection or MED technology as standard. And this combats ransomware in three different ways. Firstly, it will look for the type of file activity patterns that a ransomware program would typically cause. If detected, it can immediately and automatically halt any file synchronization between the participant locations to prevent it spreading around Dennis's organization. It can also send email alerts to Dennis and his administration team so that they can be made aware of a potential malware strike that they may need to look into. Secondly, PeerGFS can write bait files that act as a honeypot for malware. These are hidden files that the users typically wouldn't see and shouldn't be touched by anything else. If they are, an alert can be triggered and synchronization can optionally be halted too. Thirdly, on Windows servers, PeerGFS can establish directory traps, which, like bait files, are hidden folders that the users wouldn't see. These folders point back to themselves, so as a ransomware process is trawling through the files and folders, looking for the types of files that it wants to attack or encrypt, it will get stuck in the directory trap, looping round and round within that same folder, again triggering an alert and buying Dennis and his admins time to investigate. Think of this like a fly getting stuck on flypaper, or <laughs> as I like to see it, the Hotel California solution. You can check in anytime you like, but you can never leave. The MED technology is designed to prevent peer GFS from spreading ransomware infected files to other servers. Remember, peer GFS is designed to react to file changes in real time, so ransomware could spread quickly otherwise. So that is why Dennis's disaster recovery solution also has the off-site copy, and it's better than having just another copy of the data at the off-site location. By using object storage such as Azure Blob, an AWS S3 bucket, or an S3 compatible storage solution at that co-location site in Frankfurt, Dennis can have a copy of each version of each file stored as a separate object and stored natively, so that there can be none of that nasty vendor lock-in. If Dennis decides to stop using PeerGFS, the files are still accessible at each location in the normal way. There's no gateway or special file formatting or vendor-specific technology to prevent Dennis or his users from getting at their data. Dennis can set controls over how many versions of each file to keep and for how long to control the disk space required and, of course, rein in the ongoing cost to the business. This means that if hit by ransomware, Dennis can easily restore a version of the file or files from a point in time before the ransomware struck. And rather than pay some evil a-hole a bunch of Bitcoin for the decryption key and hope for the best, he can simply overwrite the corrupted files with the last good version. To summarize, Public cloud and hybrid solutions definitely have their place. There are certain workload types that are perfect for cloud solutions, and definitely some that are cheaper and more sensible to keep within your data centers. As to whether public cloud should play a part in your disaster recovery strategy, well, 
that's really up to you. It can be very effective, but so can keeping an off-site copy in a data center or co-location site. When designing a good disaster recovery plan, which of the following would you choose? The 3 2 1 backup principle? Yeah. Continuous data protection for redundancy and business continuity? That makes sense. Ransomware protection? Definitely. But what about public cloud or a co location site? Let us know in the comments below and if you've had experience setting up a disaster recovery solution in the past, please also feel free to share any helpful tips and tricks. You never know, you may be helping someone who's got to do this for the first time. If you'd like more information on the Peer GFS software, a trial copy or simply to discuss how it could help with your DR plan, You'll find the contact details for your local Peer Software office at peersoftware.com forward slash contact. I hope this three part blog has been interesting. To be notified when we do the next one, why not subscribe and hit the notification bell? Thank you for giving me a bit of your time. Take care.